Alibaba is expected to report results this Thursday, and many of you are looking to this channel for the first look and subsequent analysis that I do on the company. And you know that I'm gonna be all over it. But what I wanted to point out is that a lot of you are new to the channel. Of the 6,000 subscribers that we have, 5,000 of you came in in the last three months. So you may have missed a video series that I consider to be the greatest overhang on the Chinese economy, which is the real estate sector slowdown, led of course by troubles at Evergrande Corporation. I really don't think you should be investing in China without understanding this issue and the potential fallout. So without further ado, here's part four of the series where I investigate if this real estate crisis was in fact caused on purpose. Any material decline in the price of real estate in China would lead to a reduction in the local government's main revenue source, land lease sales. And to that extent, any major correction in housing prices would also be a significant hit to the wealth of China's urban middle class, resulting in a potential for political uncertainty. Now that's something President Xi does not want to see happen under any circumstances. So with those points noted, why did the Chinese government create the current Evergrande crisis? That's what we're going to look into in this video. You're watching more money. Let's get it. And without wasting any of your time, I'm going to skip right to the answer, which is that the Chinese government has had no choice but to address the real estate market bubble in a strong way because previous attempts have proved to do very little. And we are now getting to the point where if the bubble pops, it can be catastrophic for not just China, but potentially a domino effect to the world as these Chinese property development companies have issued debt and equity to investors outside of China. Now, how exactly did we get here? Simple. China's real estate market has had deep systemic flaws, which up until now have largely gone unaddressed. Now guys, like I said before, I'm not an expert on Chinese economics or the real estate market, but I will tell you what I believe to be true. Local governments face top-down political pressure to meet economic growth targets. Furthermore, these same local governments rely heavily on the revenue generated from the sale of land leases to fund government projects and services. So when local governments are faced with both top-down and internal pressures to develop housing, these local governments have of course overbuilt whole cities on the backs of the real estate speculators that believe that prices can only go in one direction. These same speculators don't really have anywhere else to put their money anyways because of a government strategy to keep wealth within China. So they really just have the stock market, private business investments, and real estate. So in order to ease the real estate bubble, in August of 2020, the Chinese government introduced three red lines for property developers, which are the following a liability to asset ratio of less than 70%, a net gearing ratio of less than 100%, and a cash to short term debt ratio of more than one times. So on to the main question in this video, why now? Well, UBS Global listed five reasons which I absolutely agree with. The first reason is to control home prices. The Chinese government is all too aware that housing prices have skyrocketed in the past 15 to 20 years, which has made property unaffordable for millions of people. The government wants to tackle this home affordability issue Issue because common prosperity is a fundamental tenant in how the leaders want to govern the nation. Everyone should have the opportunity to prosper together as a nation. The second reason is to manage land markets. A highly speculative market where real estate prices are only going in one direction leads to developers aggressively buying up parcels of land to build up their land banks in an effort to bid up land prices. They do this to essentially control demand and supply and feed into the bubble creating mania that local governments are all too happy to participate in as they are getting windfalls from the land lease sales. Federal governments have also been happy to allow this to happen as they were achieving their objectives of economic growth of mainland China. By reducing developers' access to debt, they will reduce this practice. The third reason is to ration credit to the real estate sector. The government is concerned with the amount of concentration of capital in the real estate sector. Reining in the lending to the real estate sector is part of the government's strategy to channel lending to more productive areas of the economy. The fourth reason is to lower the cyclicality of the real estate sector. In general, real estate markets have been cyclical largely due to government intervention. The irony here, of course, is that government intervention is largely what created the bubble and is what is potentially creating the burst with the Evergrande crisis. Finally, the fifth reason as outlined by UBS is to keep real estate developers effectively in business for the long term. They are described as systematically important with strong links to numerous upstream and downstream industries. Thus, they are important to the economic growth of the nation and should be kept strong. I absolutely agree with these five reasons, but 
If the current government intervention is only addressing the symptoms of the problem and not the cause, then local governments need to continuously sell land leases to generate revenues to carry on government programs. They will absolutely need to create a property taxation solution in the country. I actually dive into that property tax issue and ask if it's possible to create a property taxation system in China, which you can click into right here. If you're new to the channel, I really hope I gained your subscription today. And of course, guys, don't forget to smash that like button. It really helps YouTube know that this channel provides valuable content and thus it'll share with more viewers. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you later.